12th of the 10th, 2014. And whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then we've got to read on after that. Jesus never said, I'll meet you there. He said, follow me. When you're following someone, you're with them. All the way. Amen. Amen. All the way. Or none of the way. So, I'll say a few things before we go into the message today. Uh, let's open our Bibles at Acts chapter 2. We'll have a look there. Acts chapter 2. Read a couple of verses there. Verse 39. For the promise is to you, to your children, and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Whosoever calls. We need to be called to be called. And we need to call, be called to call on him. He desires that none perish. Verse 40, with many other words, Peter testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverted generation. You see the words coming out of Peter's mouth there, hey? You see the words, even in verse 38, then Peter said to them, Repent. See that? Repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus the Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Peter <coughs> had just received the gift of the Holy Ghost and look what's coming out of his mouth. They were tarrying in the upper room as it says in Acts 2 verse 14. Follow me please. Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. The sons and daughters will prophesy, the young men shall see vision, the old men shall dream dream. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. And it goes on to say, talk about signs and wonders and blah blah. And a lot of people get mixed up and think that we're, everyone's still waiting for this great outpouring and this great revival but Peter tells us clearly doesn't he that was then that w what Joel said was then the day of Pentecost but you see what happens when the Holy Ghost comes the, the Holy Ghost came into my life 27 years ago and you know what happened I started preaching repentance that's what happens people who, who, who uh, have the gift of the Holy Spirit they start preaching repentance because it's such a beautiful thing. Hey? As it says in Acts chapter 2, 38, Peter said, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus the Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hey? Repent. That's the message that comes when the Holy Spirit is in your life. It, it's not this garbage Hillsong message. It's not this rubbish AOG message going along and befriending sodomites and, and, and uh, lesbians and transvestites and, and transsexuals. That's not the, for the people of the Lord. Brian Houston like <coughs> all false teachers, Ryan Houston comes forward with this, after all, well, we are saved by 
uh, sinners saved by grace. That is not the message of Jesus, brethren. We need to understand that and get it clear. That's not the message of Jesus, sinners saved by grace. The message of Jesus is in the scriptures. And many have tried to burn the scriptures and get rid of the Holy Bible. Many have tried to say you don't need it. The Spirit has come, we don't need the Bible. Well, I tell you there of their father, the devil, who say that. There's people on the YouTube today that even say the Bible is the mark of the beast. Well, look, I tell you, stay clear of that mob. Get out of there. Hey? There's no other way we can walk the walk without the scriptures. The world don't have a Bible and they don't know what's what. They don't know him from her or anything else. Let me say, Brian Houston, he said this morning on the television, well, after all, we're all just sinners saved by grace. No. Ephesians 2.8, we have been saved by grace through faith. And if we lose faith, we're going to lose, we're going to forfeit, would be a better word, our salvation. What do you mean by lose faith? Well, we cease doing what Jesus said. Hey? Paul was and Peter were good for letting the, the new disciples know that we must be bare fruit befitting our profession. We must be bearing that fruit. We first of all have to bear fruit worthy of God letting us repent. Hey? And then we have to bear fruit befitting that repentance. And then we go on and continue on Romans 11, 22, lest we be cut off. Okay? Brian Houston this morning, he went on about Jonah again and how merciful God is. God is merciful. God is merciful. And he went on to talk about, uh, went on, Brother Shadrach, you got a minute there, please? He went on to talk about how Jonah didn't want to preach to Nineveh, never mentioned the media bits, and kept on saying, well, thank you, brother. Went on <coughs> to say that, oh, God is so merciful. And But when we read Jonah, uh, about Jonah, it, it, chapter 3 verse 5 and to 9 we find that these people turned these people turned from their sin these people got into sackcloth they, they were bearing fruit God how can he be merciful if he looks on a heart that refuses to repent how can the Lord be merciful to that heart how can he allow that one to repent? And then Mr. Houston doesn't like the idea of preaching repentance because he seems to think that's pointing the finger. But repentance and forgiveness is the message of Jesus. All the rest is just window dressing from what I can see according to the scriptures. Brian Houston said this morning that like it or not, well, he called them guys. Like it or not, Sodomites are with us. They're amongst us. They're in the churches. And, they're, and they're, the same-sex marriages are going ahead. And we need to get used to it. And listen to this. This is Brian Houston. They're in our community. And we don't want to go pointing the finger because we're all just sinners saved by grace. Hey? The church, he said, he said, the church, and I gather he's talking about uh, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, the church are going to have to understand. They're going to have to understand. The Spirit of the Lord was ministering to me as I was listening to Mr. Houston. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me once again, they're showcasing a church and not the crime. And you know who does that? You know who showcases 
the church and not the Christ. The Roman Catholic whore. The Roman Catholic harlot. It's all about this church that's so merciful to unrepentant sinners. This, this Jesus that is so merciful uh, uh, to ongoing sin. Now it's damnable. It's damnable. Unless we repent, we cannot be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. Right? Showcasing a church that accepts the vilest of sinners just as they are without repentance. But the reality is when someone's truly repented, they disown. They disown that sin they were in. And they not only disown it and go their way, they denounce it publicly. And we see that in the scriptures, don't we? Right? We, we see here with Peter in Acts 2, 38, where he says, Repent and let every one of you be baptised in the name of Jesus so that you may receive the gift of Father, the gift of the Holy Spirit. We see in the, in the same book, the book of Acts, where the people who repented, it cost them a lot of money. It cost them a lot of money to repent. They had all these books of sorcery and only God knows what else. Uh, idolatry and all kinds of books that they trashed and it was worth in today's currency hundreds of thousands of dollars. But they pushed it all aside because their repentance was real. I believe that's the very thing missing in churches today. The preaching of real repentance. Real repentance. I'm done with it. I'm finished with it. I've had enough of it. I'm sick of the shame. I'm sick of the 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 the, the inferiority. I'm, I'm sick of the heartache. I'm sick of the misery. I'm out of here. I'm going to walk with Jesus. Can someone say amen? Hey? Disowning it and denouncing it. And telling the public how vile it is and how vile you were. And how vile... I got no problem with telling people how vile I was. Look, the devil had enough of me in the end. He was ashamed of me. I was that bad, I tell you. I mean, when you get that bad, you know you need a saviour. Hey? The moment Peter uh, had that baptism, had that filling... That the Holy Ghost was moving in the upper room. Look at the difference of stinking religion that goes on in repetition just like heathens. Look at the difference. What's the message coming from Peter? Oh, tolerate the Sodomites. Is that the message? Tolerate the immoral. Tolerate the liars. Tolerate the thieves. No. No, where the Spirit is moving... The scriptures say they cast the young sexual immoral man out. He was having a sexual relationship with his mother. And he said, they said, get him out of the church. At least the plague the points. Get him out. Turf him out until he comes to his senses. He may repent and then he can come back. We don't hear that today, do we? They don't want to hear that today. Hey? They're in the church of the second command. The church of the second command. It's all about people, isn't it? It's all about the untouchable. Even all through the world today, the untouchables, the sodomites, untouchable. Beware, you can't go saying that. The untouchables, women, untouchable. Oh, you shouldn't go saying that about women. You're a woman hater, woman hater. You're, you're, you know, you're a chauvinist pig. No, the scriptures are the scriptures. We're told there's order and we know when the, the women folk don't toe the line with what God said. That's, that's the order of the day. What God said, not what man says. Not what some weak gutted man, spineless, coward man being beaten down by his wife. Hey? Might look like a giant but a coward inside. No, no, 
I'd rather be short, bald, and ugly and be a man of God than to be that, than to be some bloke coming out of the gym looking like with all the pumped up and all the rest of it, but inside there's this little gutless, weak, broken down, woman ruled Ahab. Can someone say amen? amen. Hey? We need to stand up as the people of God and the people of the book. We need to stand up and we need to proclaim the truth. So captives can go free. Hallelujah. So captives can go free. Brother Isai, would you like to go with brother there and see if everything's all right? Hey? We need to stand up. We need to stand up and proclaim the truth because there's no power in anything else. There's no power. There's no delivering power. There's no uh, 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 um, uh, agape love. There's no, there's no supreme love w without the message of Jesus and without turning to Jesus. Can someone say amen? It's getting worse. It's getting worse and it's getting worse. And Brian Houston, he's always trying to cover his tracks and make things look good that are just the saga with Frank Houston and Brian Houston who was on his watch and never exposed all the goings on. Hey? Loving Jesus first. Putting Jesus preeminent. But it came down to flesh and blood, didn't it? But I tell you, truth is, is stronger than blood. The truth is stronger than blood. And we hear the family first, people saying, oh, you know, uh, we don't want to put our own down. Look, you just got to tell it the way it is. Doesn't mean you don't love them. You got to tell it the way it is so we can sort this out before the judge comes. Because when the judge comes, there's going to be no partiality. He don't give a hoot who you think you are or who others think you are. He's going to judge in righteousness and in uh, uh, justice. He's not going to mess around. Same judgment for men and women. It's not going to change. So we need to get it right today. We need to wipe the slate clean today, each and every one of us. Eh? When the Spirit is moving... When the Spirit came into my life, I had nothing else to say but repent. I didn't have any other message except repent. And that's the message I carried for 27 years, going on to 28 years. Repent. There's the, that's the answer. Hey? The, Jesus can't do anything until we repent. Hey? Unless we repent... How's the word going to take its place? How's the word going to do its work? It's not going to do its work, is it? Friday night on the news, they're bringing out all the new laws and new rules in the United States. You're not allowed to say boy or girl anymore. That's stereotyping. I look at Sodom and Gomorrah coming in, fully fledged. And now in the schools in the United States, they're trying to bring in there's no male toilets and female toilets. There's just toilets because that's discriminating too. That's stereotyping. You imagine what it's going to be? Can you just imagine it? Drug crazed children in, in schools, and that we know they, you can buy any drug you want in most schools, especially in America. Going into the dunning. Imagine what will be going on. This is the devil, the god of this world. Endeavouring to have his last fling, hey? It's all making a smooth path. The ushering in, ushering in of the transvestite, the transgenders and the cross-dressers and the perverts at large. Sodom and Gomorrah revisited. Can someone say amen? Hey? That's, it about, that's about it for the news today around the world. I don't think we need any more, would we? Hey? I'm just about exhausted thinking of that. Let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading out of Hebrews. Hallelujah. 
Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read and start reading. At verse 12. Don't forget, we're in the we're in the psalm season. We're in the Psalm Season series. JTCM. Psalm Season series. And uh, I'm presenting some of the psalms and songs the Lord gave me. In the 21st century, a bit different to King David's. King David's covered the same sort of ground. Same sort of message. Salvation, damnation, joy, peace, power, faith. God as preeminent and no matter how much money you got it doesn't compare with having the Holy Ghost as King David said Psalm 51 didn't he take not thy Holy Spirit from me he never said don't take my crown and jewels he never said oh don't take my position as king from me he didn't give a hoot at that time he was going downhill fast Hey, he was going downhill fast. Sister Michelle, you might be able to sit next to uh, uh, Brother Clifford there and help him with finding the, the passages. Can someone say amen? Yes. We're going to start reading in Hebrews 12, verse 12. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace. Pursue peace. With all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Final verse of 17. For you know for you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing he was rejected for he found no place for repentance though he sought it diligently with tears see that see that oh you can't forfeit your salvation it's an example in the New Testament. There's a long gap between the New Testament and Esau. Big, big gap. But the Lord seen it fit to piece the Holy Bible together as it is. The Lord's book. Put it all in there. And it's for our admonition, our guidance, and our blessing. And all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh. Profitable for reproof and instruction in righteousness. Can someone say amen? Back in 2008, the Lord put this song on my heart. Without holiness, you're not going to see God. Without holiness, we won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Without holiness, we won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Is Jesus your number one? Or is it your family and friend? Is Jesus your number one? Or is it the money sitting in the bank? That holiness won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Without holiness, 
see God It's a promise, my friend The day The day of reckoning is on its way Jesus will judge us all The day of reckoning is on its way Will we be sheep or will we be goats? Well, I don't even see God It's a promise, my friend Without holiness, don't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Without holiness, we won't see God. The title of our message today is The People of the Book. The People of the Book. The Holy Bible. So let's turn in our Bibles, please, to the writings of of Hebrews 12 and let's go to verse 12 therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees make straight paths for your feet so that that which is lame may not be dislocated may not be dislocated but rather heal and that's the word of the Lord isn't it that's the holy book this is the one that the muslims just let me read this to you what the muslims say about the people of the book the muslims they say that in the quran 929 fight those who believe not in allah nor the last day nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by allah and his messenger now here we go nor acknowledge the religion of truth even if they are of the people of the book hey if they are of the people of the book without holiness we're not going to see god we're not going to be his and we're not going to be delivered are we so we need to look at the word holiness and we need to ask ourselves, what does it stand for? Um, is Jesus number one? Holiness is not optional to salvation. Holiness, holiness is not optional to salvation. It, it's a master. Let's turn in our Bibles, please, to the writings of Colossians 1. And we go there. It's not a. It's not optional. Holiness is not something that's untouchable and unreachable. We go over to Colossians here today. Colossians chapter one. I just need to take my antenna up a bit here today. I'm. I'm not zeroing in. Colossians one. Verse thirteen. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Hey? In whom we have redemption. Initially through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And he is before all things. And in him all things consist. 
and he is the head of the body hi the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in here we go that in all things he may have the preeminence if we're going to be his people he has to have the preeminence it can't be a part-time love holiness has nothing to do with a reserve army. It's a full-on walk with the Lord. It's very hot in here today. <laughs> it's a full-on walk with the Lord. He has to be preeminent. Holiness or even the, the book that we, we follow is called the Holy Bible. H-O-L-Y meaning the H stands for honor in the Filipino language DR1 we must honor the Lord the book being the people of the book we must honor Yahweh we must honor Jesus we must respect him first and foremost regardless to what the wife says the friends say the religions of the day say regardless to what the ecumenical church says regardless to what denominations say if we're holy people the problem is that people don't understand holy they think holy is far off in the hills in a white stucco building maybe in the Greek Isles where they have all the orthodox religious hypocrites but holy is right here and now holy is every day and every way and every minute of the day holy is honoring the lord that he as we just read in colossians if we go back there please in colossians uh, chapter one he has to I, I like the way that paul says it in Colossians there Colossians 1 and the verses 18 and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he may have preeminence it has to be everything brethren the, the Bible talks about the holy saints the Bible talks about holiness this is the psalm season series you can't say you're going to walk with jesus and not be holy that doesn't mean you go out and buy white garments our white garments are invisible by the blood by the blood colossians 1 13 he has delivered us from the powers of darkness and conveyed us into his kingdom in whom we have freedom by the blood the forgiveness of sins by the blood we can't be forgiven any other way only for what Jesus has done holy people are people that honor God people that respect him people we show our respect by doing what he says we show our respect uh, by when when we we make a commitment to the Lord when we confess we're going to do something we do it we're not like as it says in Joshua 24 in the tail end of that chapter it said very clearly that the people said we're going to follow Yahweh and God Almighty and we're going to do what he says Joshua said well you're a witness against yourself how horrifying is that hey? to be a witness against yourself that you said you, you you told the lord you made a covenant and that's what we do when we're born again you see people aren't told these things people aren't told what true salvation is about making a covenant and an agreement it's one thing to break an agreement with a man over a motor vehicle but to break an agreement with god who's going to help us who can save us hey who can help us 
Have a look at what uh, the Lord said about Esau. Hebrews 12. Lest there be any fornicator. He's mentioning fornicators here with the with Esau or profane. Profane, he calls it. Hebrews 12, 16. Lest there be any fornicator, any immoral person or profane person like Esau who for one morsel of food sold out his birthright. That's our born-again privilege is our birthright into the kingdom. We're, we're born in. That's our birth. Our new birth is a, a, a type of Esau's birthright. And he put it aside for the pleasing of the stomach. It's sensual, wasn't it? It was sensual. Pleasing to the flesh. And how many millions upon millions will burn in the fires of hell? They put aside their birthright. They put aside their born again obligations. And their number one confession to love the Lord with all their heart. First, like the church of the feasts, they forgot their first love. They lost it. They lost their first love. And many scramble to get back, don't they? And they find it so hard. They find it so difficult. We got to treasure that first love. It's the same in a normal, in a in a natural marriage when you you lose the first love, and the husband and wife start drifting apart. You know, and they're like virtually strangers in their own house. They're just like ships in the night passing by. Right? This is a reality. Without holiness, we will not see God. It's a promise. It's, it, it's not a threat. Hey? It's a promise. We're not going to... Well, we'll see him all right at the judgment stand. But as I sang this little song, as I penned this in 2008, these were the scriptures the Lord had put on my heart. Without holiness, won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Without holiness, we won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. It's a promise. Hey, Jesus, you're number one. Or is it your family and friends? Hey, Jesus, you're number one. Or is it the money sitting in the bank? Without hopes, won't see God. So who's the number one in your heart today? Hey? Is Jesus have preeminence? When we make that decision and we choose to allow Jesus to be number one, I tell you now, you're not going to be struggling in your walk. You're not going to be struggling. You're not going to be making up excuses saying, I'm trying my best. You're going to be doing more than your best. You're going to be doing what the Lord has asked you to do. Because... In ourselves, we can't do anything, as Colossians says. It's through his blood that we were sent free. It's, it's not us. The only thing we can do is surrender. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 1. It's his power. What does Peter say in, in 1 Peter 1, 5? We'll have a look at that in a minute. But we get back to Colossians just for a minute. I want to concrete this. It's no good rushing through and having a whole pile of stuff and we don't understand it. That's what's happened in the churches. Everyone's got Bible degrees and they don't even know what the scriptures really mean. They've got to become personal. We've got to get that revelation from Father. Colossians 1, 13. He has delivered us. He has delivered us. 
Colossians 1 12 giving thanks to Father who has qualified us. There's nothing that we have of our own that we can partake of the inheritance of the saints. Colossians 1.14 In whom we have freedom through his blood. It says through forgiveness of sin. He's talking about repentance. That's where the freedom is. The freedom comes with the turning away. You have to make that decision. Look, you can go to the pastor day and night. You can go to the elders and the deacons. You can go all over the world. You can go to men that have names as delivering people from the wildest demons. But I tell you something now. If you subject yourself to the word of God, you're going to go free. You're going to be delivered. You're not just going to be delivered. You, you're going to lay hold of and you're going to see your qualifications that the Lord has given you. You know, when the Lord delivered me from my sins, I seen I was then qualified minister I, I didn't have a piece of paper qualified preacher because father qualified me hey I give thanks to father who qualified us to partake of the inheritance of the saints in the light the fivefold ministry is part of that inheritance we, I inherited that it's nothing of me. I didn't go to Bible college and learn how to preach. I didn't go to Bible college and learn how to write or, 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 or teach the scriptures. The Lord qualified me. I, that was part of my personal inheritance. But there's many out there that have to go to Bible college. Because that's not in their inheritance. They've called themselves to do that. They... They've been called by a man to do that. They've been called by a religious franchise to do that. Can someone say amen? Hey? Hebrews 12, 12. Strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. And that's the healing place, isn't it? The straight and narrow. The word of God. That's where the healing comes. Everyone that's hurt me. Everyone that's came against me. Everyone that's ripped me off. Look, my dad, he should have taken responsibility for me. He should have done a lot of things that he didn't do. All that is been healed all that's been dealt with because i made that choice i made that decision whether there was girlfriends when i was growing up and i, I had problems with or uh, something that i've done and i wasn't uh, proud of it's all been taken away by walking in the word of the lord by honoring you see the blessing why the lord wants us to put him preeminent he wants us to honour him. He wants us to be that holy people. Hey? He wants us to, in that word holy, H-O-L-Y, he wants us to know that he is omni. Holy people know that God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. This takes the weight and the heat. Holy people know that God is omnipresent, that we're not thinking that oh, I'm on my own now, I'm meat, meat for the devil. Only if you don't obey. Only if you don't live up to what you already know, you're meat for the devil. But we know that the devil can't touch us. The devil can't do anything with us. We know that through Job, don't we? The devil went to the throne room 
and he said, I'm going to take this Job on. What do you reckon? The Lord said, you can do what you like, but I'm setting the standard. I'm saying how far you can go. And that's what God does. He allows certain things to come into our lives to try us so that we always rely on him. He wants us to be forever reliant on him. He loves us. Hey? Straight paths are healing paths. And all the, the, the years that the palmer worm, the, the, the kanga worm and the caterpillar have eaten, all those, those memories that come flooding through your mind, healed, cleansed, delivered. Hey? Because we walk as holy people. Because we honour the Lord. H-O-L-Y. Because we, we accept him. He loves you to believe him. That he's omniscient. That he's omnipresent. And that he's omnipotent. That he's all powerful. That we don't run to psychologists. That we don't run to religion. That we don't run to our own resources. That when the, the hands are hanging down like Magilla Gorilla and the hands hang low and the feeble knees, he said, make straight paths for your feet. And all these troubles and all these things that the Lord can deal with then, if we're on the straight path, he'll be able to deal with them. As we, as we look to the author and the finisher, of our faith. Hebrews again. Eh? Hebrews 12 2. Looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of the faith. Eh? Without all in Once again. It's a promise my friend. Without holiness we won't see God. It's a promise my friend. Is Jesus your number one, or is it your family and friend? Is Jesus your number one, or is it the money sitting in the bank? That home. For some, it's people. For some it's their boyfriends, for some it's their girlfriends, for some it's their family, it's their mum, it's their dad, it's the uncle they're trying to impress, for some it's the it's all this money they have and it's sitting there in the bank, they're worried about it all the time. They always think about how much money they got. It's always on the on their minds, forever thinking about. They're not honouring the Lord in so doing. They don't believe he's omnipresent. They don't believe he's omnipotent. They don't believe he can look after the bird. He can look after me. They don't believe it. it, 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 it it's pathetic. Because it, it comes down and filters down through the minister. And, and, and the religions of the world with their with their books and this with price tags they don't believe he's omniscient they don't believe he he's omnipresent they don't believe he's om, om, omnipotent he's all powerful more powerful than a locomotive hey he can leap tall buildings just by looking at them uh, we know at the end of Superman, one is in a wheelchair, isn't he? Superman's in a wheelchair. Muhammad Ali shaking all over. All the he great heroes. The Hulk's got gangrene or something like that. You know? But without holiness, without honouring God, without accepting him, See, we've got to acknowledge God. My, my people perish through lack of knowledge. What that really means is my people perish through lack of acknowledgement. The, the Jews had all the knowledge. Right? 
the, the, the Jews wanted signs and wonders and the Greeks wanted wisdom, didn't they? The Jews had the Torah. They didn't acknowledge him. You can have the knowledge, but you've got to acknowledge the knowledge. You, you, you can have the, the cold drink on a summer's day, sitting on the table, and you, you're really parched and you, you're so thirsty. If you don't drink it, you, your thirst won't be quenched. We can have it right there. You can have the, the best preacher and teacher in the world at the end of your street, preaching in some dingy hall, powerfully anointed, great revelation, straight down the line. It's got everything going for it, you know. The anointing, everything's there, it's evident. What's the good of it if we don't hearken? Ezekiel, they said he sounded like a, a, a wonderful um, musician. Oh, he's so great. Music to my ears, this preacher. Wow, awesome. Ezekiel went away, didn't do jack. Didn't do one thing he said. They sit before me as your people. They hear my words and go away and they don't do it. What's the good of it? <clears throat> What's the good of, uh, of having all the earth-moving equipment and we we don't use it? And there's still all the scrub sitting there. That <clears throat> there's a project to be done and no one's done it. It's faith. Faith. Abraham showed he had faith. Faith is doing what Jesus said. Go and kill your son. That's a big ask. That's a big ask. And that's the one he's been waiting for. He was waiting for Isaac. I've been waiting for a boy like you to come into my life. I've been waiting. And when the boy came, the Lord said, go and kill him, please. What? But he had this other boy, Ishmael, just initiated nothing but disaster in the earth. And it's still, the overflow is still there. The, the, the original Muslim, Ishmael. Because he listened to his wife, didn't he? Sarah said, get in that room, go on, and, and sow your oats. So they wild oats. And there was the boy, Ishmael. And because he was of Abraham, Abraham loved him anyway. But the way the script read, he had to go. That holiness, once he got, it's a promise. Unless the Lord is honoured. He has to be respected above everyone, everything. It has to. That's holy. That's holy. Another, another singular word for holiness is truth. Walking in the truth. You cannot walk in the truth and not be holy. It's got nothing to do with perfume after shave, white long garments and burkas. All burgers. It's got nothing to do with that. Walking in the truth, you, you're holy. Hey? Be ye holy as I am holy. And didn't Jesus walk in the truth? Hey? The words of Father. He walked exactly as Father said. That's holy. H O L Y. Honouring God, respecting Him, respecting Him. There's no other way we can show our respect for the Lord. None. Except do what he said. Ecclesiastes 12, 12 and 13. Honour God. Fear God and keep his command. That's man's all. You get it? All. Nothing else. Nothing else. Isn't that wonderful? The poor can do that. The poor. The black, the white, the fat, the skinny, the ignorant. 
Allah. When the Spirit of the Lord comes, the promise of Father, you become more than intelli intelligent. You, you become a saint. <laughs> and then you get the message, say, hey, without holiness, you won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. You start preaching repentance without holiness. You start preaching repentance because you know that's going to, that's the love message. What's going to happen if you preach repentance and be baptized and then you receive the Holy Spirit? You've got the lot. David knew that the Holy Spirit is the lot. Take what you want, but don't take the Holy Spirit, please. Take what you want. Let's go to Psalm 51. Have a quick look there, please. Take what you want. It, it's a warm day today, isn't it? Boy, I'm cooking. And not with gas. Psalm 51. And I'm hot-blooded any time. I'm hot-blooded, hot-blooded. Psalm 51. Verse 11. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That's everything. When you got the Holy Spirit happening, oh, I think you got it all. But they say, oh, no, no, no. <coughs> There's a new resort being built, half a billion dollars at Brookwater. Did you know that? Yeah. Thailand style. Half a billion dollars. That's just down the road where... My daughter plays tennis. The golf course, Brookwater Golf Course. Half a bill. Oh no, that's, that's where it's going to be. Oh yeah, I'll be right there when I get that. No, there's something else. And when that happens, then there's something else. And this is always, it's a never-ending story with the world. You never keep up with the world. Never. Everything's changing dramatically, daily. It, it never stays the same. You never. Drive yourself nuts trying to keep up with a nutty world we live in. Right? But our all. Honour God. Acknowledge. Acknowledge Him to be who He is. Om omniscient. The greatest scientist ever. Science meaning knowledge. The great, He knows everything. You know, the re pain relief for the most part, is relieved just if you have someone to console him. You have someone that will listen to you and understand. I tell you, Jesus understands. He, he, he knows everything. He doesn't know, well, you know, he's not like humans, like me. Well, I can't really understand what you're going through, but I sympathise with you. I'm a little bit apathetic, you know. Uh, a, a, a little bit, uh, what do you call, what's that word? Not apathetic. Uh, I'm a little bit, um, yeah, yeah, get that next time around, <laughs> sympathetic, it's still not the word I want, but the Lord knows exactly how you feel, but how many go to the Lord? How many rather stay on the phone and at the end of the phone call you just worn out and you feel worse than ever? And the problem is still not solved. But we have a good shepherd. And we go to him in prayer. What needless pain we carry. What needless pain we bear. Because hey? we don't go to the Lord in prayer. And that's that owl, isn't it? In holy. If you're going to be holy, he has to be Lord. Not you. No one else. He has to be Lord. That's a holy person. One who respects and honours God by faith and obedience. One who ex acknowledges Him that He is omniscient, He is omnipresent, He is all-powerful, He is all-knowing, He is all-present. He is omni. He is Lord. And you know the whole Bible has been summed up in that, that everyone's going to know one day that He is Lord. The Scriptures say every knee will bow. 
That includes those who never wanted to. But I know it won't see God, don't know it. it's a promise. It's not a threat, it's a promise. But I know it won't see God, it's a promise, my friend. The day of reckoning is on its way. Jesus is going to judge us all. The day of reckoning is on its way. Will we be sheep? Or will we be goats? Down all in earth you won't see God. What about Matthew 10, 32 to 42? Unless you love me more. Hey? A holy man loves the Lord more than their mother, sister, brother. It's just what the Spirit does to you. It's not what I've done to me. It's what the Spirit has done to me. you done this to me. Paul the Apostle said, The love of God constrains. Constrains me to say and do. Live thus. Paul always rolled the glory unto Jesus. He always rolled the glory unto the Lord. He respected the Lord. He reverenced Him and honoured Him. He acknowledged God as being all. We, we know that Paul was holy. He acknowledged that He is omni. He, he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. He didn't take the glory, you know, do what He did and then steal the glory and say, oh, this is just me. No, he said, I'm just a man like you. Worship God who created heaven and earth and all things seen and earth. This is the simplicity of it. This is what puts my head in a knot sometimes. I think, oh, Lord, don't they get it? You're the power. You know, you're the power behind it all. You're so awesome. You created it all. Heaven and earth and everything in it, seen and unseen. Hosanna in the heart. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Hey? Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. You see, when we confess that Jesus is Lord and when he is Lord, we're, we're holy people. People don't know what holy is. People don't understand what holy is. And, and, and they think it's too far away, you know, a place too far away. But the Lord's cut it short and given us a zor, he put a zor action in, not a saw, a zor action. You know, a lot couldn't make it, you know, and he said, well, I'll, I'll cut it short for you. God's hand. He makes it so much easier. He says, I'm going to give you my spirit. I'm going to empower you. Don't go anywhere till you've been endured with power. Amen? Of the Holy Ghost. That's in Acts 2. They tarried in the upper room. The power of the Holy Ghost came. I can tell you now, I can't do anything without him. I, I, I'd go back. I, 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 I'd return to the mud and the muck where I was because I have no power. It's He in me. It's, it's the Holy Ghost that gives you the power to do those things that are good and you want to do and not to do those things that are bad and you don't want to do. That's what Paul the Apostle said. He said, I can do all things now. Oh, wretched man I am, but I can do all things. Who can save me from me? Jesus, hey? Without holiness, without holiness, it's a promise, my friend. Without holiness, we won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Is Jesus your number one, or is it your family and friends? 
Yes, Jesus, you're number one. Maybe it's the money sitting in the bank. Can't take it with you. Glory to the Lamb. Hey, let's turn to Second Corinthians five, please. Second Corinthians five. H O L Y without being holy. We're the people of the book. We're the people of the truth. If they're of the truth, the Muslim Quran says, kill them. Hey, fight them who believe. Hey, fight them who believe in the book. The people of the book. That's our message today. We're the people of the book. What book? The holy book. We're the ones that revere and reverence and respect and honour and praise the holy God almighty Yahweh. We're the ones that acknowledge him as omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. We're the ones that say Jesus is Lord. We're of the, of the book. We're not A-O-G-C-O-C, Hungry Jacks, Baptists. We're the people of the book. We're not afraid of any man. We're not violent people. We're not full of hatred. We, we carry a message of love that can deliver all instantly by faith, obedience, repent and be forgiven. That's the message of the book. The holy book. Repent and I will cleanse you, deliver you, forgive you. I'll take your sin into the sea of God's forgetfulness and I will empower you again. That you can walk on this time no longer with hanging hands and, and, and weak knees. You will be healed as you walk the straight and narrow. You will be delivered. The Son of God has set you free. Free you will be indeed. Hey? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done while in their body, according to what they have done, whether that be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men and women, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. The day of reckoning is on its way. The day of reckoning on its way Jesus will judge us all the day of reckoning is on its way will we be sheep or will we be goats without all in it unless look we're not going to be his we're not going to live with him we're not going to see him with joy in our hearts and say, oh, Lord, you finally come to get me. We're going to be trembling with fear. We won't be able to look at him if we're not walking as a holy people, if we're not revering him, respecting him, putting him first as preeminent, acknowledging him for who he is. Keeping the covenant, not breaking the covenant. Not being like Esau and trading off and then coming back later and saying, Oh, well, I'm ready now. I'll take my birthright back. And then the Lord says, No, you won't. You had your chance. I said, I'll start crying then. <laughs> he said, Oh, please. I'm sick of those false tears. You're not even truly repenting the ugly thing. Go away. Hey? Like a little child when they're corrected and they're put on the face, you know, and then the parents give in to it and they just keep ruining the child. They just keep ruining that child and ruining that child. They put on the little face and they go, all right, you can have it then. Here, let me inject some more sugar. 
Is it okay, Lily? Is it? If I make you a diabetic? Here, shovel it in. I love you, but I'm killing you. <laughs> Here, have some more sugar. Go on, eat it up. <laughs> I love you. Well, it might be a Brian Houston thing, you know, just sort of embracing everyone, you know? We just, we are the world, you know, we're all the same, aren't we? We're all the same, we're all sinners saved by grace. No, we're not. No, 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 no. And it is us and them, because the scriptures say so. Come out from among them who us without holiness. It's a promise, my friend. H O L Y. Holy people, their God is Yahweh. I don't care who your God is. If your God isn't Yahweh, you're not holy. You're deceived. I don't care if you wear a burqa. I don't care if you wear clothes and you can only see one eye. I don't care. Look. Every other God is sinful. <laughs> every other God. They, they, there's something not right there somewhere. They're killing hatred. They're telling them to go out. As they say in the Quran 9.29, fight those who don't believe in Allah. What does Jesus say? He says, if they don't believe, dust your feet off and go your way. Leave them with me. Hey? Quran 9.29, do not acknowledge the religion of truth. That's what they call the Bible, the religion of truth. Don't acknowledge the truth. Do not acknowledge truth, not even the people of the book. That's us. Without holiness. Without Yahweh as your God, you'll be damned, my friend. Without Yahweh as your God, you'll be damned, my friend. It has to be Jesus. It has to be Yahweh, the God of the Hebrew people. You can't take Buddha. We can't take all these Indian gods. We can't take uh, the Pope or a mythical Mary. We can't take anyone as... Uh, our, the one we preeminently adore and, and worship and honour and respect other than Jesus. That's the Holy One. That's the people of the book. The people of the book respect and honour and revere Jesus. The people of the book, they acknowledge Jesus is fully man and fully God. That Jesus is God Almighty. That he is the great I am. The, the, the people of the book, they, they have Jesus as their Lord. Because he's the Lord of Lords. Okay? The people of the book say, uh, Yahweh he created all things seen and unseen. Not Allah and not anyone else. Yahweh. So... When someone says to you, oh, yeah, what church do you go to? You, you can tell them. You go to Jesus the Christ Ministries. They say, well, you know, what denomination is that? You say, we're the people of the book. Everything rests on that word. Everything rests on the doctrine of Jesus. It's the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. And without it, I'm blind. I don't know where I'm going. I'm anyone's. Without the doctrine of Jesus, you're anyone's. 
Anyone can tell you anything at any given time and lead you anywhere. But I tell you what, it's the Holy Bible, isn't it? The Holy Bible. It's the book that honors Jesus. It's the book that glorifies Jesus. It's the book that acknowledges that Jesus is fully God and fully man. It's the the holy book. It's the, the book that says that Jesus is Lord of Lords. It's the holy book. It, it's the book that says that Yahweh, Yahweh is the all-powerful. He's the Lord and God of a warring people. The people of the book. I tell you what, if you're talking to a Muslim and they want to know who you worship, you say, I worship Yahweh and I'm a person of the book. And you see what happens then. Because that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Without holiness, you won't see God no more. It's a promise, my friend. Without holiness, you won't see God. It's a promise. How can we be His? How can we be holy? How can we be a saint? How can we be His people and disciples if we don't believe? If we don't accept, if we don't fear God, Yahweh, and do what he says. Because that's all we can do. You might think you can do all these other things. No. He, he saw, he wasn't pleasing to God. Enoch pleased God. That's the testimony of Enoch. He didn't say he'd done all these great things and built a lot of buildings. and He just pleased God. That's what pleases God. That's God's plan. I'm going to finish up now. That's God's plan. God's ultimate plan. In a nutshell. For humanity. God's ultimate plan. Just go to Hebrews. Twelve. Verse eight. But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are a bastard. You are illegitimate and not son. You're with me today. Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to Father, the Father of spirits and living? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may partake of his holiness. God's ultimate plan for humanity is holiness. Everything about God is holy. Everything about God is holy. Everything. We have to be very careful. We're dealing with a holy God. And when the, the priest in the Old Testament, the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, if their heart wasn't right, they would die. They'd be dragged out by a rope that was tied around their ankle. He's a holy God. Be ye holy as I am holy. Hey? He wants us to partake of his holiness. He wants us to be in him as Jesus is with him. That we will be one as he is one with Father. That we will be one with God. That's partaken there. Right? God's ultimate plan for humanity 
is that we be holy people. God's ultimate plan is that he has a people that worship him. Now, if that's not true worship, I don't know what is. H-O-L-Y and my uh, deconstruction of that word today is true worship. That is true worship. To respect and honour and to do what the book, the holy book says. What God says to do. That's true worship. True worship is acknowledging Jesus as omni. Omnipowerful. Omnipresent. Omniscient. Knowing all. Everything. He knows what you think before you think it. But yet people still won't worship him. He knows how many hairs in your head. But people still won't worship him. How great will the punishment be? Holy. The holy book. And we are the holy people. We are the people of the book. We are the people that choose him as Lord. God's ultimate plan. That he is our Lord. Hi. Hey? Yahweh means totally self-existent one. Right? Totally self-existent. Jesus. Totally self-existent. Jesus was not born. Jesus always was. But he was born a man. To compensate for man. If he was trying to compensate for giraffes, he would have been born a giraffe. But he was here to compensate and be a propitiation for humanity's sin. So he became a human. The perfect offering. The perfect spotless lamb, Jesus. God's plan for humanity that you be holy. That you live in holiness. And what's the, the greatness that, that is, is, is spoken around the throne? Holy, holy, holy. That was their song. You say, wow, that's not very, not many verses in that. Gee, it doesn't say much. Well, Bob Dylan, he used to have, uh, he only knew three chords, didn't he? He became famous. It's got nothing to do with writing the riff. It's got nothing to do with all the complexities of man. It was just holy, 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 merciful and mighty, early in the morning, I will sing my song to thee, holy, holy, holy. God in three persons. Holy. Without holiness we won't see God. It's all of a message today. The people of the book. We're the people of the book. We're not afraid to say that. And we're not ashamed to say that. We're proud to say that. We're not of AOG. Baptist. Seventh day Adventist. We're not of... The Episcopals of the Christadelphian, the Great Rabbin Youth, the Mormon for the Moron. We're the people of the book. We walk by the book. And anyone that doesn't walk by the book is not of us or with us and we're not with them. We've come out from among them. Who? Us. Come out from among them. Be separated to the holy God. Not all these other gods. Can someone say amen today? Hi. Thank you, Jesus.